In today's Lightroom tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create amazing night pictures and really get a lot of interest, dynamic and differentiation within the whole lighting scheme in your pictures. I'm going to start off with this photo right here and I'm going to turn it into a photo like this at the end while showing you the whole process all the way from the raw file to the finished and fully edited picture. Alright, so we've got our scene here and as you can see in terms of the shadows it looks really nice. But in terms of the highlights, it's way too bright, it's completely blown and there's absolutely no detail recoverable there. And that is exactly why I shot this in an HDR sequence. So as you can see here, we go from very bright all the way down to very dark. And I shot these manually in one f-stop of a difference, so I can at the end stitch them together into an HDR and get all of the highlight as well as the shadow detail. So before you stitch together an HDR, there's one very important thing that you do, and that is just go to any picture first of all, go down to the lens corrections, click on remove chromatic aberration as well as enable profile correction, and then just choose your lens. And then once you have done that with one picture, you can just go to your last one, hold down the shift key, left click, and you've got all of your pictures selected. And you want to do that so you can click on synchronize, click on check all, and then just synchronize. And that will synchronize this profile correction as well as the removing of the chromatic aberration to all of your pictures that you have in your sequence. And that is a very important thing to do before you stitch them together into an HDR. So then once you've done that, once again, I've got all of my pictures selected, just right click, photo merge and HDR. So this is gonna take maybe a few seconds, maybe a few minutes, but for you, it's just gonna take a second right here. And one second later, we're here with the preview always want to make sure that you align your pictures and in terms of the deghost amount it's up to you. Personally I prefer to stick with none because there's not really anything that I'm worried about in terms of ghosting. So then let's click on merge and it will just create a panorama. This again is gonna take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. And another second later we've got our HDR picture and it might not seem very interesting or spectacular right now, but if I zoom in here and if I move around the exposure slider in both ways, first of all into the plus exposure, you see we have all of this shadow detail with pretty much no noise at all. And if I go into the minus exposure, we still have all of this highlight detail in the whole picture and nothing is blown at all. So HDR, especially night photo pictures, if you're shooting in a city with lamps and everything, I would really recommend you to do that and shoot an HDR. It's going to give you a much better picture at the end. And once again, as you see here in this photo, HDR does not necessarily have to be for an artistic look or anything. It is literally just the increase of your dynamic range. So you have all of the shadow as well as the highlight detail. Alright, so let's get into the actual editing here and as you can see it's a little bit dark so I'm gonna make the whole picture quite a bit brighter. And then also I'd really like to bring up the shadows by around 50 as well as bring down the highlights by about the same amount. So that will give us a very nice and relatively flat starting base and it will give us a lot of opportunity to further adjust the picture. Then the next slider that is very very important is the temperature slider. And as you can see here this picture is very warm and you might even like that. But personally I prefer to just go for a very neutral look at the start. So I'm gonna bring it more towards the blues actually here. Maybe just something like this. And that is so I can complexify the whole lighting scheme and the whole color a lot more. So I'm gonna do that first of all by going into the split toning. I can even do that with dodge and burning later on. But for now split toning is really what I wanna do. So I'm here going to the highlights, just click on this little box and it will give me a color palette to add color within the highlights. So for example here, I would really suggest you to stick somewhere within the yellowish orangey tones Although you can also go within the reds or purples or anything else. It completely depends whether you want to go for an artistic picture 
or for something that kind of looks natural. If you want to go for something that looks natural, once again, I would suggest you to stick anywhere from the orange to the yellowish range. So I'm going to first of all choose the exact hue that I want with a lot of saturation and then go into the saturation slider and bring that down to something that is more feasible. So as you can see here from zero saturation to 50 saturation to 100, it really changes the overall warmth of the picture, but it does so in a much more selective way. So if I show you the difference once again, here is the saturation of the highlights in the split toning at 100, and here would it be from the color temperature, which would be very warm, and you see it's not quite the same. It's a lot more boring if you just add warmth within the temperature slider. So that is exactly the reason why I like to start off with a look like this and then go into the split toning and just add a little bit of warmth very selectively within the highlights. And this is definitely a thing that depends on your liking. Maybe you just want a little bit of warmth. Maybe you want really a lot of them. It's all up to you. But for this picture right here, I think I'm going to stick with around 60. Then the next thing would be shadows. And this does the exact same thing. Just of course with the shadows. And of course, naturally, the color comes from the light sources. For example, the lamps or in day pictures, the sun. And that is why the shadows will not have such a big difference. And here you could even go and add a little bit more warmth if you really wanted to. You could also go with another color. It makes a lot more sense to add artistic color in the shadows rather than in the highlights. But the thing that I actually really like to do here is go into the blues and just add a little bit of saturation. And that is once again to add even more differentiation from the warm tones, which are more towards the highlights, to the shadow tones, which are a little bit more blue. So once again, you don't want to add a lot here in the shadows at all. You really just want to add a little hint, and in this case, about 15%. So if I show you from before any split toning and after, it's quite a big difference while not completely blowing your picture in any way. So once again, here is before and here is after. I really like the split toning. In some pictures it can have a bigger impact than in others. But especially if you're working with light, that is a great way to add complexity in the color scheme of your lighting. And with that said, let's go back into the basic adjustments and move around all of the sliders that we haven't already. So first of all, the contrast. I would really suggest you to add a little bit of contrast. It really helps to give an additional pop and punch to your picture. Although around 20 usually does the job within night pictures. Then whites, I also like to bring them up just a little bit. And with the blacks, it's really different. You can either go into the minus and get kind of an even more contrasty picture, or you can even bring them up and get a lot more black detail, but at the same time, making your picture not quite as contrasty. So once again, completely up to you, but I think here, even going a little bit into the plus actually works better in my opinion. Then the next thing is clarity, and clarity is very important. So a lot of people, I think, will just go into the plus clarity no matter what. But the beautiful thing about Lightroom is that you can go into the plus, but also into the minus with any slider. So especially with clarity, it's very important to see both the looks with plus and minus clarity. And that is because clarity really is kind of a very, a very selective, a very fine and detailed contrast. So if I show you the extreme example here by going into the plus clarity, it looks a lot more harsh and all of the textures, especially the ones of the smaller elements in your picture, really look very pronounced and very harsh. So if I show you once again the difference from 100 into the plus to zero, you can see it's a huge difference. And personally, I really like in kind of soft pictures where there's not really any detailed adjustments or detailed areas that you really want to pronounce. It's a much better idea to stick within, you know, the zero or maybe a little bit into the minus clarity even. The minus will just kind of do the opposite. It will make it look a lot less pronounced, a lot less textured 
which then results in a much more hazy, maybe magical and kind of more mysterious kind of look. So it's really very important that you try out both and not just go into the plus clarity no matter what. I think actually at the end I'm going to stick with the clarity slider at zero in terms of the global clarity and that is just so I have a very neutral look in terms of the clarity and so I can also add additional local clarity later on with the adjustment brush and just increase or decrease the clarity within certain areas that really need it rather than doing it globally. So very long explanation for an adjustment that pretty much doesn't have any effect for right now, but I feel like the clarity slider is one of the most important ones that you have in all of Lightroom. So then let's go on to the next two sliders and that is the vibrance and saturation. They kind of do the same thing which is increase or decrease the amount or rather the saturation or vibrance within your picture. Now the vibrance tends to add or decrease the colors in a more subtle way but it's also it really affects all of the colors within your picture whereas saturation is very selective and with the saturation to 100 it increases the red as well as the yellow tones a lot. But if I go into the vibrance it also increases all of the purples and the blues additionally to all of the other colors. So this is very difficult to decide right now because there are going to be a lot of other color adjustments to be done. So I would suggest you to generally skip out on them for right now. But um, in this case, because I feel like it's almost a little bit too saturated, I'm just going to go a little bit into the minus saturation. So then let's see, is there anything else in the basic adjustments? And there isn't really, the only thing that's left is a tint. And here it's, it's kind of an artistic choice. Usually if you have a very greenish looking picture, you of course want to equivalate that out by going into the magenta. And if you have a very magenta-y picture, then you of course want to correct that by adding more greens. Generally speaking, with a night pictures or anything with kind of a warm lighting scheme, I would suggest you to add maybe just a little bit of magenta for the whole picture in any case. Alright, so now we're done with the basic adjustments, let's go down into the tonal curve. And the tonal curve, I like to bring up the highlights. The highlights down here really just affect the very bright parts, as you can see here. Whereas the highlight slider in the basic adjustments just kind of affect the very broad overall highlightish areas. So very different, I really don't know why Lightroom doesn't name them differently, but I guess that's how it is. So once again, I like to bring up the highlights in the tonal curve just a little bit. And then the rest of these sliders are very, very different from picture to picture. The only thing that I really can suggest you here is to look at the dynamic rather than the exposure, because exposure is very easily fixable but dynamic is really the important and the valuable stuff here. So let's go on with the darks and I don't think there's really too much to be done. Maybe just a little bit into a plus and the shadows. The shadows are kind of the same as the highlight slider. They really just affect the very dark shadows compared to the shadow slider within the basic adjustments, which just adjust the shadows in a very broad way. So once again, let's finish up the tonal curve right here and maybe a little bit into the minus shadow actually works. So let's quickly see before any tonal curve adjustments and after. It's not a huge difference, but it does add a little bit of dynamic in this case. And once again, it's all about dynamic. Don't care about the exposure because that's very, very easily fixable. So then HSL tool. Now this is a thing that won't have too big of a difference, you can play around with it if you want, but I don't think I need to in this particular case. So down here we would have split toning, already added that. Down another adjustment you have the detail and this is very important for overall look and crispness but at the same time it doesn't really have an effect on the colors or lighting or the overall perception and feel of the picture. 
So I'm just gonna leave them out for now. Now lens corrections we've done already before the HDR process and transform, not necessary in this photo. Let's go down into the effects instead and finally another tool that is actually interesting because here you can actually add vignetting. And vignetting really helps to add additional interest towards the censure. It also helps to set your whole mood of the picture, as well as take away some of the interest from the corners. So here you have a bunch of sliders, but there are pretty much only three that are really important. First is the mount, and this is very self-explanatory, so it's pretty much how much vignetting you want to add. I'm gonna go really quick into the minus 100 so I can show you the other two sliders. And the second one is the midpoint. Here you can adjust how much vignetting you want in your picture. Generally speaking, I like to go a little bit more in towards the center. And then the other thing is feather. And by bringing that to the right, you can really make your feather and your transitioning from the vignetting to the rest of the picture very soft. And of course, if you would go towards the left, it makes it very harsh. Generally speaking, I like to go with about 70 feather with pretty much all of my vignetting. So now that we've added all of the midpoints and feathers, of course, we want to adjust the actual amount to something that is much more feasible than the minus 100. It is very important that you don't overdo that here. Just look at it as an additional adjustment and it shouldn't really overpower your picture but once again, rather add a little bit of additional interest towards the center, as well as set your overall style. So here's before any vignetting, here's after. Maybe I'm even gonna bring the midpoint a bit more towards the center. And as you can see, it's very subtle, but it does have a difference and I really like the look of it. So then the last and final global adjustment would be camera calibration. And here you have two things, one for one the profile, and for number two the number one for once the profiles, and for number two the primary for number for once the profile adjustments, and for number two the primary color sliders. And the first thing you want to adjust is the profiles. Now this is a very subtle adjustment of your hue, your colors, and just your overall look of your picture. Now this is very different from photo to photo, so there's absolutely no way I can tell you what to do here. You really have to try them out for yourself and at the end decide what looks best. I think here it's either a, a choice between camera standard or camera neutral or even the standard dope standard. But at the end, I really like the camera standard look, even though it makes some of these lights a bit too bright. I think that's very easily fixable. I really like the way it adjusts the color. It makes it kind of look a bit more subtle and more natural than the dope standard that we had at the start. So I'm just gonna leave that there and go into the primary colors. Now this is, once again, you have to try them out for yourself. Just a very important thing to know here is that one slider will have an effect on any of the other colors. For example, if I would adjust the blue hue, it will also have an effect on the reds and the yellows as well as the greens. So that's just kind of something to be aware of. But once again, I just would suggest you to move around these sliders at the end, stick with whatever you like best. Most of the times you don't really have to go too far into either side. For example, here with plus 100. It really doesn't work, it's just a very subtle and a very fine adjustment of your overall color scheme. So it's not super important, but I think it's worth to go, you know, really quickly and just see if something works a little bit better. And here I think I'm just gonna leave the blue hue at zero and perhaps just increase the saturation a little bit. So here's before any camera calibration adjustments and here's after. As you can see, it's a little bit brighter, which I might not prefer so much. But in terms of the colors, it's a lot more natural looking. And I really like the look in terms of that. So once again, from before any adjustments here to after. 
and this is very dependent on your picture. It might have a much bigger adjustment, it might have a very small adjustment, but it is definitely worth to play around with. Alright, so now that we're done with the global adjustments, finally, let's go back into the basic adjustments real quick once again. And here, I just want to go back to the exposure and just fine tune that a little bit more. Just see whether something works. For example, here, maybe just a little bit less into the plus exposure at the end. And here, you could also go to your vibrance and saturation and just kind of fine tune the colors there. For example, here, I might just go a little bit into the minus vibrance but then go a little bit less into the minus saturation than I had before. And this is really just the fine adjustments. You could even go to the color temperature and just fine adjust that as well. But I do think that it looks pretty good how it was. So now we're really done with all of the global adjustments. And if I quickly show you from before F any of them and afterwards, you can see it definitely looks a little bit brighter, which I like for the most part, but I definitely have to adjust with the local adjustments a bit further. But in terms of the overall dynamic and differentiation, especially within the colors, I really think that looks so much better towards the right here. It's much more interesting. And once again, this is really all of the global and kind of starting adjustments that I'm then gonna further complexify and further adjust with the local adjustments. And in terms of the local adjustments, you pretty much have three that you wanna use regularly, and that is the graduated filters, the adjustment brushes, and at last the rail filters. I first like to start off with the graduated filters and just add any that I see needed in a picture, and then go on to the next adjustment. So here, I really think there's a lot of potential for graduated filters, and I use them for any of the adjustments where you really want to affect a large area. So for example here, I really think that the right as well as the left side could use a little bit of minus exposure, kind of an additional vignetting into certain areas. And for that, I'm just gonna add a filter right here, make a very soft edge, and then go into the minus exposure. And you always want to make sure that you fine tune all of that, the filters, the settings, so it at the end really works the best with the picture uh, that it can. And I'm even going to add an another one with minus exposure over the left side here. And once again, you want to make it look natural and not completely ruin your picture. And you could even go in an entire stop into the minus exposure as I do in this particular case. But you don't want to go too far and at the same time you always want to make sure it still looks natural. So then let's add another one over the bottom here. Just angle it slightly once again with a very soft gradient and add a little bit of minus exposure. So this is a great way to add additional vignetting into certain areas, or for example, if you want to add more vignetting over one part than another. For example, here in the sky, I just want to add some more minus exposure to really draw me into picture. And if I show you from before any graduated filters, if Lightroom loads, and afterwards, it really works so much better. It's a huge adjustment in this particular picture. In some other pictures, it might not have quite as big of a difference, but as you can see here, it not only makes some of the areas that are supposed to be darker, darker, but it also really gives you complexification from the right and uh, especially the corners being very dark, leading you into the rest of the picture, which then is a little bit brighter. And it's very similar to the overall vignetting that you can add in the global adjustments. But with the graduated filters, you have even more control over the angling and the actual amount. So for example, here, I've added a lot more amount than for example in the sky. And that's really the beauty of the local adjustments and in this case, the graduated filters. So then the next thing and the second last thing in fact, before I go into the final dodge and burning, which is the adjustment brush. And I like to use the adjustment brush for any local areas, for example, clarity, 
If you can remember, I said that I'm going to add some local clarity rather than just global one. And I'm just going to use the adjustment brush for that. So I'm going to add a little bit of clarity here. Always want to make sure that your feather is to 100. So any of the adjustments look very natural. And I'm just going to add a little bit of clarity over some areas that I think could be a bit more pronounced. For example, this bar right here, maybe some chairs, maybe some of these houses in the background. And by pressing down O, you can see all of the places that I've adjusted. So it's really very selective and it's definitely not needed in the entire picture. So let's press down O again to get rid of the mask and show you from before any of this local clarity which is here to after. It definitely helps to give certain areas a bit more attention, but at the same time, it also just complexifies the overall clarity of your picture and gets more differentiation in terms of that, which of course also leads to a more interesting picture. Then the another thing that I really like to use the adjustment brush for is for any other large adjustment that cannot be done with the graduated filters. For example, here, I'm going to add a little bit of minus exposure within that building right there. And, you know, just to kind of equivalent out some of the exposure, if you want to do more complex exposure adjustments, then I would really suggest you to grab the rail filters for that. But I really like the adjustment brushes for, you know, just large areas that don't really need any special attention to detail. For example, some of these lights are a little bit too bright and I'm just kind of roughly going to equivalent them out here, maybe a little bit more minus exposure. And I think that looks pretty good as a starting base. Maybe I'm even going to grab another one and go a little bit more into the minus exposure and go ev over even some other areas that even require more minus exposure. So this is, by the way, also a thing that you could do at the Dartrum burning stage, but I really like to do the very rough areas first with the adjustment brush. So I think that looks pretty good, maybe just a little bit more here and there and over there as well. And I'm going to show you real quick from before any adjustment brush adjustments and years after. So you can see it's definitely just a lighting scheme and, you know, the light um, overall exposure to equivalent that out a little bit. But also, of course, the clarity in just certain areas. So then let's go into the rail filters and the rail filters I use for the Dartrum burning. And Dartrum burning has a huge impact in your overall lighting scheme, dynamic interest, and it can really change your picture completely. So Dartrum burning, in case you don't know, is just local plus or minus exposure, which in turn increases the interest of your lighting. So it's a little bit hard to explain, but it's much easier to show you. So let me start off by just adding some plus exposure to Dachshund burning. And I'm just gonna, first of all, very important, just add a filter anywhere over your picture and go into the plus exposure, of course, if you want to add plus exposure to Dachshund burning. And I would also suggest you to mix that with whites that will really make it look a little bit more natural and even add some color, especially within kind of pictures like this, you know, where you have a relatively neutral overall color scheme, but by adding color there, you can really complexify that and make it even more interesting that way. And also you want to make sure that your feather is at 100. If I show you the extreme example here, it just makes the whole, you know, the whole feather, the whole graduation from the filter a lot sm softer and a lot smoother. And by inverting the mask, you make it so all of the adjustments only apply within the filter rather than outside of the filter. All right, so let's then go into the Dachshund burning. And I've made separate tutorials about Dachshund burning. It's very difficult to really explain in detail what I look for. But pretty much simply said, I just look to increase the overall lighting scheme and the interest of maybe certain dull areas. For example, right here, it looks a little bit dull, so by just adding a bit of plus exposure, it makes it a lot more interesting. And this is a process that's going to take you some time and some getting used to it, especially if it's your first time doing it. 
but I can promise you dungeon burning can have such a huge impact in your picture and it's such a valuable thing to take advantage of. So once again, for example, here this entire wall from the house is maybe a little bit boring. So I'm just gonna adjust some of these colors and um, of course also exposure. It's very important that you adjust all of these sliders depending from filter to filter to location to location because of course certain areas need more plus exposure, other areas may need less of whites and even other areas need a little bit more color. So you can once again just right click duplicate, you will get a duplication of that filter over the previous one that you then just can drag over to any area of your picture. And for example here, another one, maybe just make this logo a little bit brighter. And it's really a lot of stuff that you can do with Dartrum Burning. You could even zoom in and make some more kind of fine-tuned adjustments over very small areas. But I'm gonna keep it relatively well, relatively compact here, even though the video at the end is gonna be very long, I know that. But I think it's very important to show you that from burning. It's also one um, a thing that a lot of people requested to leave the whole dodge and burning process in. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And once again, just for example, here on this house wall, it maybe looks a little bit boring. You know, just a little bit more exposure and differentiation in the lighting could help it. And hopefully this doesn't lag, I think it should be fine. And maybe another one even here. Once again, it doesn't have to be a huge impact every single time. It can be a very small difference or just a medium difference. Of course, you want to make sure that it looks natural and you adjust it to the actual area. So don't blow anything, don't make it look unnatural. The whole purpose and the whole idea of Dartrum Burning is to add differentiation and interest in your lighting scheme without making it look obvious and just kind of like you've added Dartrum Burning there. It's all about the subtle differences, so your viewers of the picture don't even necessarily notice that you've done anything. So once again, it's very important to keep that in mind and that will also keep you from overdoing any of the adjustments. So there's really a lot of things that you can do. In fact, maybe I'm just gonna add a little bit more here. And after you've added all of the plus exposure dodge from burning, I'm not quite sure if that's all I'm going to do for this picture, but I think, you know, just for the moment I'm done with it. So if I show you just for now, from before any dodge from burning to after, you can see not only is the lighting much more interesting, I mean, once again, look from before to after, so much more interesting, but it also adds a differentiation within your color. For example here, once again, from before to after, not only the lighting, but also the colors change. All right, so after that, after you've added plus exposure dodge and burning, you wanna go with minus exposure ones. And minus exposure is definitely not nowhere near as important as plus exposure, but it sometimes can help to just add a little bit of minus exposure. And by the way, you can even mix that with a little bit of minus blacks if you would like. Really wouldn't suggest you to add any color though. And to just go over some certain areas that you think could maybe benefit from some minus exposure. So this is also, once again, a very important process. So you have some differentiation from dark to bright and not have just plus exposures. For example, another great use of it would be within these houses, just to kind of add some differentiation from the different parts of the houses. And it really starts to get a little bit laggy because Dartrum burning is very hardware intensive, especially with recording it in a full HD resolution but I hope you should be fine here. I feel like this is something that I say with every single of my videos, but it is really quite choppy and by far the most, um, the most hardware intensive task. All right, so let's see here, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. And once again, just place them in between the plus exposure ones, just place them on perhaps sides of the buildings that are naturally a little bit darker. And once again, just as with the plus exposure, 
you really just want to exaggerate certain areas and make them more interesting. And the very important effect of the minus exposure is also to add additional differentiation from dark to bright and make your whole picture a little bit more contrasty in a very unique way so you don't have everything just super bright and no differentiation from dark to bright anymore. So I'm really trying to kill the time here while I'm waiting to, for Lightroom to load all of the Dartroom burning filters that I add and maybe another one over here. So if I've made a completely separate Dartroom burning tutorial, if you're interested in that, I'm gonna link it in the description down below. And there I go a lot more into detail about how you can use it in different lighting schemes and different pictures and um, really some more techniques and the importance and also show you a bunch of different examples. But I'm gonna do it relatively quick here and I don't think there's really too much to be done anymore. Maybe just a few more minus exposure filters towards the left here. And even with the minus exposure, just as with the plus exposure ones, you could even zoom in and really add some very small and very detailed exposure adjustments. But for the sake of the video, I don't want to make this too long. It's already long enough, I'm sure. And I'm just going to add a few fil more filters very quickly here. Yeah, I think that is pretty much going to be the second last minus exposure filter. Maybe another one over here. Come on, Lightroom, you can do it. It's soon over. Yeah, come on. Man, Lightroom is so slow sometimes. It's really a very annoying, but I'm done in just a few seconds. So I do think that should do the job here. So let's just take a quick look at the picture and just make sure that nothing is too overdone, too boring, or, you know, this is also the thing if you have any additional dodge and burning, whether it be in the minus or plus exposure, this is the time you want to add it before you say that you're done with the whole picture. And maybe just another one minus uh, filter over here. And maybe even like a bigger one in terms of minus exposure over a larger area. Just because I think this overall area was a little bit too bright. And this is also to show you, you can add minus exposure over a very large area and still add some smaller plus exposure filters within that area. So you can really mix these two together. And once again, I also go a lot more into detail about that spe specific technique in my specific Dartroom burning tutorial. But I feel like there is some room for some more plus exposure filters. So let me just do that real quick right here. And I really think we're gonna be done any minute now. I know this has been a very long video, but if you're still here, then I suppose you find it interesting and helpful. So that is very, well, that's awesome, you know. I do appreciate you watching that long. But uh, let's see here, maybe just another one over there. And once again, let's take a look at the overall picture. And yeah, maybe just a very last one over there. So right click and duplicate. By the way, you could also press down your front slash key to duplicate uh, individual filters but it just a uh, right click and duplicate works fine for me. So I'm gonna make this perhaps a little bit bigger and just not as bright. And I'm gonna say I'm finally done. All right, let's show you from before any Dachshund burning and to after. Now, this is a very severe difference, of course, especially if you see the direct comparison. And you might even like it or say that it's a little bit more even and build a bit more neutral at the start. But at the end, I definitely enjoyed the Dachshund burning and like the look a lot more, even though there is definitely some more fine adjusting of the color to be done. For example, here, this particular filter could maybe benefit from a little bit less in terms of the orange color. But these would all be the things that you would want to do if you would edit a picture for yourself. 
I think I've already spent enough time on Dachum burning, so I don't want to make the video, you know, an hour long. But once again, if I show the difference from before any Dachum burning to after, especially the side, but also all of the lights here look so much more interesting. And even if you look at the left side right there, it really complexifies everything. And also keep in mind that if this is a little bit too much for you, you could of course just not add as many Dachum burning filters or not go quite as far into the plus or minus exposure with the respective filters. I've just reduced the color a little bit in this one, but I'm done with the whole picture here, so let's not only see before any Dachum burning to after, but before any adjustments at all. And this is the raw file, I mean it's not technically the raw file, it's after stitching together 8 different raw files, but it's just an unedited version, it would look very very similar to a raw file, really the only difference that we have here is the much extended dynamic. But you see, it's a lot more, it's a lot darker, it's a lot more boring, but also in terms of the color, it's nowhere near as interesting and as complex as we have it afterwards. I mean, it's a huge difference, and once again, this was for the video, you could fine tune everything much more, even zoom in, and I really, really actually love the picture at the end, not only the difference from before to after, but I think this is a very solid picture, not only from before to after any effects and adjustments, but even as a picture, it really looks so much more interesting, but it's a very solid picture at the end, I think. There's really so much detail, so much going on, and by adding all of this differentiation and color and lighting, we really managed to bring it out and make the whole picture really pop and make it so much more alive. I think the only thing that could really work here is if I would maybe add some people from some of the previous, some of the previous um, photos, but yeah. I mean, overall, this is really a huge difference, one of the biggest differences I've ever had in any pictures, and I absolutely love the effect. I mean, even if you just look here, the color, of course, it's not quite as warm, but it's so much more dynamic, and there is still some warm tones, it just works a lot better. And then if you, even if you go towards the left here, it looks so much more dark and just boring towards the left, whereas the right really makes it pop. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, certainly if you've watched far enough to hear me say that, and by the way, if you're interested, this is a street near the Barfüsserplatz in the city of Basel in Switzerland, which is one of the most populated places in all of Basel, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the picture. And if you could take a quick second to either like or dislike the video, that would be hugely appreciated really helps me to see which kind of videos I should do in the future, and of course any sort of feedback, critiques or suggestions in the comments down below is also hugely valued and very much appreciated. But that was it for this episode, once again thank you very much for watching, and I hope I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.